and so does the Quran. It tries to say that it is mentioned in the Bible or Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible, but uh, Muhammad is not mentioned in the Old Testament. He said, no, there is nothing in the Bible about Muhammad. Now, the format as it was, if you were there last night, was that questions were put to one speaker at a time. One to that, one to Swagat. One to that, one to Swagat. And they had to respond to those questions. It was not there at question time, a debate between Swagat and that. Can you see? So I couldn't say, excuse me, you know, he says, look, there is something there and start debating with him on the point. That was not the occasion. However, I am now responding to that question, to Brother Swagat's statement that there is nothing in the Bible about Muhammad. Now, if I had the opportunity then, of course, the audience, you know, a greater audience than tonight, but since this is being recorded, I'm sure it will reach Brother Swagat. I have uh, met a brother from his ministry, from his college, and I hope and pray that he will take my message to him. Now, I have dealt with this topic before, and initially when I started talking about the subject of what the Bible says about Muhammad, وسلم, I didn't know at the beginning, and for a very long time, I didn't know that the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was mentioned by name in the Bible. Mentioned by name. Lord and men will say, look where? Brother Swagat has been through the Bible, as he says, countless number of times. Certain verses, he's mentioning his books, he's read it countless number of times. I have read the Bible through many, many, many times. And others such as I have read it many more times, much more educated than I could ever be, understanding both Hebrew and Greek. And with this countless number of reading, the man doesn't see it. How can that be? I said, you see, what has happened is this. First, that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the original scriptures. The Old Testament, according to Christian authorities, was preserved in the Hebrew language. And the New Testament in Greek scriptures, Greek language. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, I'm sure Brother Swagat would appreciate it because I thought I heard him say that he knows Hebrew and he knows Greek. In the Hebrew language, it says, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei bainat Jerusalem. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. The word Muhammadim is Muhammad im, im, I am im. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. You see the first verse of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God in Hebrew there is Elohim. In Hebrew, El, El stands for God, Ella stands for God, Elohim is a plural form to say with awe, respect and reverence, plural of respect. In all Eastern languages, including Arabic and Hebrew, there are two types of plurals. In my own mother tongue, we have plural of respect as well as of numbers. In Urdu, plural of respect as well as numbers. You see, in the Quran also we find the very same thing. Like the verse Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Who is this us? When we are told in the Holy Quran, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say he is Allah the one and only. Here he's talking about us. No Arab Christian has ever asked the Muslim, I said the Arab Christian, has ever asked the Muslim, who is this us? 
because he knows in his language there are two types of plurals plural of numbers and plural of respect this as is like in royal proclamations you have plural of respect we have decreed says the queen we who is this we not she and her husband and her, her son no 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 it's standing for herself out of respect plural so elohim is a plural of respect im el is god ella is god elohim is more than one of respect but our christian brethren you see when they want to prove the holy trinity that god almighty is to be found in three persons three personalities in a trinity so they said this as stands for father son and holy ghost because it is in the plural say so admittedly it is in the plural but if it stands for gods that's a correct translation but there is not a bible on earth with the dozens of different versions there's not a single bible on earth where it says in the beginning gods created the heavens and the earth i said why are you so dishonest if it is plural why don't you put plural you say in the beginning gods created the heavens and the earth why do you say god you see if it's plural say so that there were gods father son and holy ghost and these three put together they created the heavens and the earth no ask any jew this is his book ask him what is his im he said look in my language this is a plural of respect god is one but out of respect we speak like that im says muhammad im muhammad im plural of respect the word is there in the hebrew language in the original what they call original it's there but they have translated that in english as altogether lovely so this beloved of mine is altogether lovely says solomon when you read altogether lovely you can't associate with the word muhammad you read it a thousand times altogether lovely altogether lovely or let's say in another language the praised one the praised one muhammad means the praised one or he said the praised one the praised one you can't think that he's talking about muhammad though muhammad means the praised one you have no right to translate names of people anybody your name should be retained mr black is mr black though he's white he's a european a caucasian but you can't say mr aswad you can't say in arabic this is mr aswad he is mr black he is in urdu i say he is mr black hair i can't say he is mr kala you know it's ridiculous i have no right to translate names of people 